Did this week's Book of Boba Fett expose a problem? How does one of Chrysanthemum's creators feel about his jump to live action? And what do the last two episodes have in store? All this and more on this week's Streaming Star Wars. Well, thank you very much, ATG3. This is Pete Fletzer, and welcome to what we call Streaming Star Wars. If you're a longtime listener of the show, you may remember it from a few years ago. And the premise has always been to sort of do a sports radio type of conversation about the Disney Plus Star Wars shows and all the Star Wars current events. I'm excited to let you know it is back. And as part of the new and improved ATG cast stream featuring both my show, Around the Galaxy, and my good friend Nick Milkey's podcast of the Wills, we've teamed up to bring you streaming Star Wars live every single Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on our YouTube channel. And then we take the raw feed from that, and we put it right here in the podcast feed as another weekly entry into our Star Wars conversation. And we would love it if you were part of the conversation. All you have to do is join us on Friday nights. You'll find a link to our YouTube channel in the notes below. And you'll hear on this episode and every episode that we are constantly mining the conversation, looking at the chat, and bringing your comments into what we are talking about. And this week, we were joined by Heather Antos. She is an editor and story consultant in the comic book world. She's worked for Marvel. She's worked for IDW. And most specifically related to what we've been talking about lately, she worked on the Dr. Afra comics, and she worked on some of the Darth Vader comics, and she was part of the team that brought Black Chrysanthemum, that gigantic Wookiee assassin, to life first in comic book pages. So we get her take on how she feels about how he was brought to life in the show. We also talk about how the Book of Boba Fett is rolling as a story, you know, as a story consultant and story editor for comic books. That's a different type of storytelling, and we got her perspective on how this particular series is doing. And, you know, this was the week where we had essentially a one-off of The Mandalorian. So you'd be very interested to hear what she had to say about that. But before we get started, I want to remind you to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review it. Make sure to become a part of the ATG family. Head on over to ATG Cast. Consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash ATG Cast. And without further ado, I am really excited to bring you this week's episode of Streaming Star Wars. Streaming Star Wars, Nick. How you doing? Yes, man? sir. I'm doing fantastic. We have made it through another week. We have. and we get to be here doing yes. what we do best: drinking things and running our mouths. <laughs> That's right. I was going to say, where's this going? But you nailed it. We're past <laughs> it. Drinking things and We're nothing, nothing if not on brand around here. <laughs> rambling about Star Wars as we do week to week. And this week, last week we had a great guest. We had our friend Patrick Cotner join us. And this yep. week we're going to be joined by comic book editor and artist and and just somebody who's got some opinions on star wars heather antos before we do this this is actually this is the first guest that's ever been actually brought to us uh, by a sponsor so let me by play this little okay. commercial i i hope she i hope she approves of it do you suffer from nightmares flashbacks hallucinations is it impacting your ability to do everyday activities like take over as crime boss do you feel uneasy and unable to trust people around you then talk to your doctor about kersantan Chrysanthemum may not be for everyone. Common side effects include lost limbs, hairballs, and a sudden urge to urinate. Do not take Chrysanthemum if you do not have health insurance as unexpected injuries have been reported. Ask your doctor if Chrysanthemum is right for you. Because as long as the galaxy has crime lords, there'll always be a need for Chrysanthemum. Well, welcome, Heather. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm great now. How are you guys? <laughs> we are great. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah. For for the people who may not know what your connection is to Chrysanthemum, Black Chrysanthemum, Santo, Santi, BK, why don't you uh, give us a little quick connection there and a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so, yeah, for people who don't know who I am, um, I could be considered, I guess, Black Chrysanthemum's fairy godmother in a way. <laughs> Uh, I was a part of uh, his debut in the Marvel Comics line um, back in 2015. And yeah, I've been working on Star Wars comics ever since. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And now what was your uh, how, what was your take? First of all, did you have any inkling that he was going to be showing up in episode two of Book of Boba Fett? No, I had no idea. I mean, like, look, ever since 
we started working on the comics and, and like, you know, Afra and BT and Trip and, and all her gang, you know, and Kirsty Henty were created, you know, there's been a lot of interest from games and, you know, other media and, and all these characters. And, you know, we've known it's only going to be a matter of time before a character actually physically show, showed up in one of the shows. You know, we've had crossover before with, you know, things dropping in the Kanan comic the same day a Rebels episode airs and, and so on and so forth and things like that. But this this was the first time and and I had no idea and like I got I got very emotional <laughs> watching it. Like I think I think I like like I, I started tearing up and like I tweeted because not to spoil anything, but I was like I got emotional watching today's episode and people are like, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that flashback at the end, it was so emotional. And I'm like, yeah, we are having two big experiences here. <laughs> and do you feel like they 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 brought him to life the way you saw him, the way you sort of envisioned him? Oh, my gosh. So he shows up in that first episode and, like, we it's really just one shot of him, right? It's right. just kind of like, oh, this dude's kind of scary. Maybe not – don't piss him off. But, like <laughs> – you know, all I could think of is like, oh my God, I hope we get to see him again. And all I want to see is like a Wookiee fight with him. That's it. That's all I want to see. And like, look, the amount of detail that they put into that puppet, the, you know, like it is like perfect compared to the comics. Like it is dead on to his scar. Hmm. Um, and so when we in episode three, right, Boba Fett uh, wakes up out of his flashback to tank. Um, <laughs> And, and you see Kersantan and you see like everyone fight him and like all of this stuff, like, oh my God, it was perfection. Like I was just so happy. And yeah, like he, he's for, for people who don't know his backstory, you know, he was the Wookiee who volunteered for the gladiatorial fighting pits. He was the one who like, he fought cause he likes to rip people to shreds. It was a game <laughs> and a good, good time for him. So you know, I can't wait to see more of him being his badass self. That's that's why I loved the way he went at that Trandoshan and just decided he was going to do it no oh, matter yeah. what. I thought, yeah. That, oh yeah. Also, that Trandoshan who like ran up to him and like broke his glass and called him like, "I'm sorry, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What did he even think was happening there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was beautiful to see. So, yeah. but we did we didn't get him or the twins or Boba Fett this week <laughs> or Boba Fett for that matter <laughs> the book of Boba Fett so let's uh let's have a conversation about the episode In case you can't tell, we we like our transitions here on Dreaming <laughs> Star Wars. We're a big fan. So Nick, why don't you uh, tell yes, us sir. a little bit about the way the uh, the the way the episode hit you this week? Well, and again, we we said it in the intro. We've heard it all week, and I say all week. It's only been two days ago. It's not that long ago, <laughs> right. but it seems like every time we watch this show on a Wednesday, we get together on Friday to talk about it. And especially, like I think last week, it was you said. It was a new episode, but it was hard to remember. Was it episode four or did that happen in episode one and two? Like it mm -hmm. started to run together for a minute. Um, this episode did not run into those first four <laughs> episodes for some very obvious reasons. Right. Um, I will say it says, and I have some thoughts about this and we can dig into it as we go along. My favorite episode of Book of Boba Fett so far has been the one that doesn't have Boba Fett in it. And it's not because I dislike what I've gotten before. I'm not that Star Wars fan. I just, I grew up with the original trilogy, but I was never obsessed with Boba Fett. He was cool, but I were characters that I was way more into than Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of put into perspective for me, I'm really inspired by the story they were telling with Din Djarin in the first two seasons of Mandalorian, the journey he was on dealing with religious trauma, dealing with, you know, this found family and parenthood. There's so much in it that I liked. I enjoyed the Boba Fett episode in Mando last season when he showed up and destroyed everybody before he ever got his armor back. Like I was into that, but I think I've kind of put together that for me, Boba Fett works best in cameo and he works hmm. best in, some shorter doses. I don't, 
I, I like that he developed as a character. I don't want him to be the mindless killing machine that a lot of people are complaining. That's not my Boba Fett. Right. I like the development. I love the stories about the Tuscans, but I like this episode way more than I've liked the other four that we got before it. Hmm. Interesting. Heather, how about yourself? Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with that. And like, not to go all like, literally, my job is critiquing story and how we tell it. But literally, my job is critiquing story and how we tell it. And look, I, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, anyone who follows me on Twitter knows I'm not the biggest Boba Fett fan. Um, I, I don't dislike him as a character, but like, he's a cool costume, and there's not a ton more to me yeah. um yeah. and what made him cool before was the mystery and ever since mm-hmm. they took you know they took his helmet off that mystery is gone um and there's still such a a huge element of mystery to Din Djarin and the Mandalorian yeah. and everything around that that keeps us like wanting to know more and that's been my biggest issue and critique with just this series as a whole is like we are, you know, five or so episodes, six episodes in, however far in we are. And I still really couldn't tell you what the actual like thesis of the show is. Mm. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I, 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 I believe there's a very interesting story in there. Mm-hmm. What that story is, I don't know if I could tell you yet. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff that's happening that I do enjoy that keeps me coming back every week. But yeah, like there's, you know, I, Mandalor- Mandalorian season one, episode one, you have this guy who's a bounty hunter and he's out to capture this thing, right? Mm-hmm. And everyone is out to capture this thing. And, you know, and we see him at the beginning literally cut a dude in half. Like this guy yes, is right. ruthless. <laughs> he doesn't care. You know, there's there's very little compassion in there. He has a job to do and he's good at it and he's going to do it. And then you see this creature and he doesn't know what a baby Yoda is. He just sees this creature and makes a choice. He goes against what he is told. Mm -hmm. And now everyone in the galaxy is after him. I don't need to know anything else. That's a story. And that's what Book of Boba Fett is missing. Yeah, I I think one of the things we talked about last week, and it's it might be one of the reasons why I felt the way I did, which I'll share in one second. But one of the things we talked about last week is there's not – we, we talk about who's the big bad in mm-hmm. Book of Boba Fett. And, you know, one of the thoughts that Patrick had last week was that, you know, maybe we don't need one. And while I think that's an interesting concept, I think you do. I think, you know, you a, a, a sci-fi action fantasy without a a compelling enemy is is – it's a different type of story. And I think that that look, that's one of the reasons why I love the book of Boba Fett is because it's a character study. We don't mm-hmm. normally get yeah. that deep character study. And so I'll share my, my reaction to the episode um, because I think it, we will have some, we'll have like three sort of different perspectives. I was actually, as much as I love uh, Mandalorian, which I, I do. I mean, I, I cannot like, I want season three to start next week. I'm ready for it now after what we just saw, but I was honestly, mm-hmm disappointed that we didn't get any book of Boba Fett this week in that when the episode ended, when, when I looked at about the halfway point, um, it's funny, we were talking about uh, thank the maker uh, before we got on here. And they, uh, I think it, it might've been Ryan who said the same exact thing. I checked, I checked the time and we were halfway through and we'd already gotten so much episode. I expected, okay, now we're going to get book of Boba Fett. And of course we didn't until Fennec shows up for literally 30 seconds at the end. Um, so I was actually a little bit disappointed. And and I think we saw a comment from Framie who was joining us uh, in the chat tonight, who said, it kind of makes you want to see him mm-hmm. more next week. For me, I, I'm ready to get back to book of Boba Fett. And I, I, again, I'm also now more stoked than I ever thought I was going to be. And I already knew I wanted season yeah. three of Mando and I didn't know what to expect from it. But now that I kind of know what to expect from season three of Mando, I, I need it. I need it now. I want it before Obi-Wan. I want it before Andor. Mm-hmm. Um, but my reaction was, Oh damn, I missed Boba Fett this week. And that <laughs> was weird for me because I agree with, with what you're saying, Heather, to me, I didn't really, I, I was, ne- I don't really need that story or I didn't think I needed that story. I'm with, with Nick, the people who sort of this cult of Boba Fett, <laughs> was always like, that's great. And he was fun to play with in the sandbox, but 
I, you know, he's, he's just, he's kind of this cool sort of star Wars presence. Um, but I'm, uh, you know, I think it, it, none, neither one of you said that you're not enjoying this story. It, it's just, it's, 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 it's a super compelling story. Um, and it's, a, it's just that about a different person, a different place in someone's life. And it's kind of an interesting story to tell, but I, uh, to your point, I still don't know where we're going with it. And I that's think, odd. yeah, I think it relies too heavily on the, like, on you knowing who Boba Fett is, right? It's relying right. Mm-hmm. so heavily on, oh, these guys know who he is and they're going to watch it no matter what, you know? And and that was, that was like something I realized after watching the, the very first episode, you know, they don't give you any context on who Boba right. Fett is, on who Jabba is, on what Tatooine is. Like I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, they assume I just watched Return of the Jedi. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. Well, and I think there's something interesting there because we've talked a lot and I've, you know, on you've heard on a million different podcasts and shows, you know, kind of the consumer level Star Wars fans that aren't as into it as deep as we are, that don't read books and comics and watch the animated stuff. Um, and I wonder if on one level that may even be a part of the deal is my dad who's you know in his late 60s and watched return of the jedi and saw the other movies probably once somewhere along the way but is not steeply ingrained in needing to know well this is all these other things that happened it's an accessibility thing and the uh, two examples that i thought of was one uh, my dad called me yesterday Hey, do you have a minute to talk? I was like, yeah. He said, I really like that episode of, you know, Book of Boba Fett with the Mandal- with Din Djarin and Mandalorian and all that. He hasn't called me for any of the other episodes this season <laughs> so far. This is the first time that he hmm. called because it was different. And it's the same way that last season when Ahsoka showed up, he called me and he was like, I really like that Jedi with the two lightsabers. She's cool. And I was like, you have no idea how cool she is. <laughs> and so there is, and this is what we say all the time too. The majority of the people that consume Star Wars are not at the level that we are not because they're just like, Oh yeah, that was fun. And they watch it and they move on with their life. I'm the one that hosts shows about it and thinks about it every day and all that kind of stuff. Um, The other thing I wanted to say, Pete was you, I know you have said several times along the way, I think there's a juxtaposition here. Mm -hmm. You talked about when Mandalorian season one was announced Yep. How you had that moment of going, do we really need this? What is this going to be? You were kind of iffy about it. Mm -hmm. And when it showed up and you got it and we get that very first episode and the baby Yoda reveal at the end and you were whole hog, you were on board, you were fully for it. Mm -hmm. Last year, we get a teaser for Book of Boba Fett. And I think we were more on board because of how much we loved Mandalorian but now I find myself over halfway through Book of Boba Fett going, I didn't really need this. Like, I would have been fine without it. That's yeah. where I was at the end of Mandalorian. So like, okay. it hasn't oh, changed yeah? for me. The only okay. thing, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, look, the only reason I was like, oh, I'll watch Book of Boba Fett was for more Fennec Shan because I really liked her yeah. like, in Mandalorian. And now I'm pissed off at how, like, underutilized Ming-Na Wen yeah. is in the mm-hmm. show. Like, you have Ming-Na Wen and she says maybe, like, one line. Yeah. Per episode, you know, and that that's just I'm just kind of bummed out by that. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we get more of her um later on. But Absolutely. yeah, I'm just that's kind of I don't know, like I'm just at this like, I mean, of course they're gonna do a Boba Fett show because money, like that's why they're doing all of this at the end of the day. <laughs> right. And like, you know, I can't compete with that, but like it just you're gonna do a Boba Fett show and it's gonna be kind of this meh is is my you know, um, is, is just a, a, an, an, an issue for me. Although I do have my Boba Fett pitch and this is what I want and <laughs> wish it would have been is, you know, we all love Boba Fett because he was this like bounty hunter, lone man, you know, Lone Ranger-esque style mm-hmm. kind of person. And so like, I just wish the show opened, he's chilling in the cantina, having a drink, whatever. And you just see a dude with a blaster show up and shoot him in the head, take his helmet, put his armor on, and he is Boba Fett. And now we're yeah. going to follow the story of a dude that we, you know, is a mystery now. Like, right. And like, I just think there would be something cool if Boba Fett, you know, it's like Batman, right? It's the mask, not the yep. man. Yeah, I think that could be cool, and and I would watch the shit out of that show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll be honest. I had said early on before. I guess we did a predictions episode before this all started. 
And I really liked, and we did kind of get it. I love the idea of a nonlinear story that it didn't have to connect week to week. And because it was called Book of Boba Fett, the chapters could be, you know, one chapter was escaping from the Sarlacc. Another mm -hmm. chapter was this other thing that happened over the course of his life. Almost and I like really did. Yes, like, yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, individual sections of it that was a part of his overall story. Um, but I will say what I haven't gotten that I really wanted is I did want some... Um, Cobb Vant. I need more Cobb mm -hmm. Vant in my life. I would have loved that story. And it, I thought about it when you said somebody else wearing his armor. Robert Rodriguez made some very bold statements. He said things like this is, you know, no filler. Every episode it over delivers, I think is what he said. Um, dangerous to say to the Star Wars <laughs> fan community. Yeah. Um, and and so you're talking about that. You're also talking about, I think there was a, there's a tweet uh, that was out there by Kyle Katarn. Um, it was a, just a really interesting dude. And he said, so many dude bros are pissed off that Boba Fett isn't doing what the Boba Fett and their shoulder tattoo is doing. Yeah. And I thought <laughs> yes. that was great. And, <laughs> but that is, that's where there's this weird disconnect. And, and, you know, so has so has Boba Fett become Space Punisher on some level because there's another well, that's, version of that's what a lot of people want. Here's the thing, and 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 I was thinking about this while y'all were saying this is like, look, this show is essentially like you know his rebirth, and he wants to change his ways and not be feared anymore. Blah 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 mm -hmm. blah. And so it is a character study. That's a hundred percent true, but it's a character study of a changed man. And we never got to know what he's changed from. And I think that's the biggest issue is if we got if there was more canon Boba Fett of who he was before, then like, I think the show would hit better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, maybe this is their attempt of like, Oh, he's a changed man from this impossible expectations of the imaginary Boba Fett. We all have in our brain. Yeah. I, you I know, don't know. I, I think what would add to that, I mean, maybe there was something simple. And again, you're, you're a story editor, storyteller. I, they could have really addressed a lot of the fan concerns if they simply – because what, one of the things I, I posted was I took a screen grab of when the um, the armor this week says, unfortunately, that only exists in legend, right? Mm -hmm. And that was so, so meta, so such a perfect phrase. Um <laughs> But if they had at least referenced, and I know they're throwing in, you know, they threw in the, I, I've I've ridden a creature 10 times the size of this. Okay, that's the mythosaur from the, um, or the dinosaur, because I don't think that's really a mythosaur from the, um, from the Christmas special, the holiday special. Um, so they're throwing in a couple little things, but they, if they had addressed a little bit of the legend of Boba Fett, even, even in, in casual conversation, you know, and, and reference these things that are in legends comics and legends books because that's what people are holding on to and i just saw the quote what was it from uh um i don't remember who the quote was just put it up there but it said something the effect of boba fett suffers from the fact that there is 40 years of of yeah. fan there it is mm -hmm. the biggest challenge for the show is that i had 40 years of fan imagination yeah. combined with eu and that's that's true and again if if they just would throw a bone to that i think a lot more people are like okay i get it I, I don't love watch. I don't need to see this story of of getting close to retirement age Boba Fett, but at least that it still exists. And that was something I said a couple of weeks ago. And I'm trying to make I, I want I think it's so important. Those stories do still exist. They absolutely exist. And for a character like Boba Fett, his legend is more important than who he really is. Yeah. Right? Just like you said, start the episode by it's the mask, right? Start the right. series with the mask. That's yeah. who he is. Yep. I, I think it's also just also important to remember, and it's the big thing like I've been having running through my head as I watch every single one of these episodes is like, this is a good show. It's for kids at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like there's only so much of that that they will show, you know? And and yep. for a lot of these people who are upset that we aren't getting space punisher, right. you know. <laughs> We've never seen anything remotely close to that in any live action Star Wars. You know, like the closest we've ever gotten was probably Revenge of the Sith when mm -hmm. it's implied that Anakin kills all the younglings. But even right. that, you don't see. You don't see it. Right. It's all off the screen. And and if if everyone remembers too, like that movie getting a PG-13 rating, like that was a big... <laughs> 
That was a yeah. very big deal. That was huge. So, you know, that's also just very, very important is, you know, these are for kids at the end of the day, it's Disney, Disney plus that's who it's meant for. And, you know, if kids are loving the show, then great. It's a success. Mm -hmm. You know, the show isn't being made for 40 year old men. It's being made for 40 year old men to watch and share with their kids. Yeah. And I think to tag right along with that, it is also marketed for mass appeal. It's not targeted at deep cover star Wars nerds Mm -hmm. like me and you and Pete and whoever it's targeted to the people that go, Ooh, star Wars. I'll watch that. I said a hundred times, my mother watches Mandalorian with my dad because she thinks Grogu is cute, but my mother has never cared about a star war in her life until that (laughs) happened. That's what marketing is. Dollars are like, there's money to be made. There's something that is going to appeal to the masses. And if people like us that overanalyze it, find stuff to like in it even better. If not, we're just going to have podcasts and complain about it, but we don't do that here because this is fun. Like you said. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about that point, Nick, that, that you were just talking yeah. about. And let's talk a little bit about the fan reaction to the comment that, that a, a Mandalorian episode is the best episode of book of Boba Fett. Because Twitter <laughs> likes to be mad, right? So always makes um, me laugh. And, and and I'm glad that we have you this week. I was, you know, when we had you booked, Heather, I was excited. I was like, we're going to get a BK episode, and we're going to talk about. <laughs> Every, oh, I thought and, about that. I was thinking about that when I watched the episode. I was like, man, they wanted me to talk about Lakers. Yeah, I, I, no, I'm going to. We'll take you either way. But I'm, no, I was going to no roll Nick under the bus and say, Nick said, call Heather, tell her we don't need her this week. And tell her, tell no, her we're off. still going to have her because I think she's adding value. <laughs> but no, I think where, where, where there's a really interesting thing I'd love to get your perspective on is okay, so people who are saying that this was, you know, the best episode and it had nothing to do with Book of Boba Fett or people who aren't understanding the connection to Book of Boba Fett or people who are who are saying, you know, this feels out of place, et cetera. Um, what's your perspective as somebody who brings us amazing comic book stories? This this is a, a one shot, essentially, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very clean one shot, too. Like, you don't have to have any context of who Mandalorian is. Like, you don't have to really have seen his show for you to like appreciate it and enjoy it you know it starts with him walking into this place for a bounty he wants you know he wants this guy um we've all we've all seen this scene before right like this is not this is not anything no one has ever seen before so uh we know what's gonna go down and but there's the added appreciation for fans who you know did watch the first two seasons of mandalorian we know what the dark saber is. We know, you know, who the armor is and her showing up like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. And yeah. we know what happens to their sect, right? And the mm-hmm. previous seasons as well. And so we can appreciate that. But but they also do a good job of reintroducing you to those concepts and things and give you what you need to know in order to appreciate and understand this episode, which that is, in my opinion, what a good story is, what a good com- comic is, you know, mm-hmm. like, Anyone should be able to jump in, you know, at any episode should be able to be someone's first episode. Any mm-hmm. comic book should be able to be someone's first comic book. You know, I should be able to pick up issue 1003 and still like be able to follow along with the story. You know, I might not pick up every little minute detail that goes in there or appreciate it, you know, the poster on the wall that's a callback to, you know, episode three or whatever, but like, you know, it's, it's the context of who, what, where, when, and why, who is this person? What are they doing here? What, why does it matter? You know, and how are they going to accomplish that? Like all of that needs to be clearly established right away. Mm-hmm. You know, who who is the Mandalorian? Well, he's clearly a bounty hunter. You know, what is he doing there? Well, he's there to capture, ca- capture his bounty. Why? Because money's nice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. How's he yep. going to do it? Well, he's got this really dangerous blade. <laughs> That's it. That's all we need. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we're in. Um, yeah. And I think you know, that that's just so important to any story. But I'm glad to hear you say that. And I, I, I hadn't thought of it the way you just said it. And it's really, really important because I think that's an issue that I think as a, there's two things going on with 
both Mando and Book of Boba Fett, and that is they come out week to week. They're not bingeable um, mm-hmm. until the series is done. And I think people have gotten into this mindset of how you watch a show. And I expect, you know, the the expectation of the binger is you're watching Ozark, and as soon as you're done with episode three, you go to episode four. And so it feels like one 10-hour block of story, whereas this is – one step forward, half step back, and then we continue the story. And then we take a little bit of a step back and then we continue the story. Yeah. And that is, I think that's where people who are saying things like, there was an article that came out today on one of the the websites saying that Book of Boba Fett doesn't know where it wants to go when it's choppy and it's disjointed. <laughs> and while I think it's a, a really poor take, I understand where people may go from that because it depends on what they're bringing to it, right? The old, the old forest tree on Dagobah, right? You, yeah. on, it's only what you bring yeah. with you that, that you take out. What's your thoughts on on Mando and, and even Book of Boba Fett yeah. as it relates to a, a comic book style storytelling? Sure. Yeah, so there is this saying in comics uh, where you are writing for the issue or writing for the trade. Hmm. Um, and Book of Boba Fett is what I would call writing for the trade. You know, you're writing for someone to just watch this all in one go, read this hmm. all in one go. And I bet you Book of Boba Fett is going to make so much more sense and be a much better show when we can sit down and just binge it in a day and yeah. <laughs> see everything next to next to next. Because again, that first episode felt like half an episode, right? right. Like, yeah. uh, like it ended and I was just like, okay, but where's the rest of it, you know? Right. Um, and that, that, uh, that's, that's how I feel about this. You know, I, I feel like Mandalorian did a really good job of having, and you have a one and done adventure in every single episode, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but still the overarching story still progressed. Yeah. Um, and that is a weakness of Book of Boba Fett. They, they have it sort of, but it's not as strong because it's not clear what the overarching story is yet. Um, you know, and, and so that, that's, that's, that's a struggle. That's, you know, that's really a struggle. Yeah. I mean, Migna Wen has said that you're going to see the show completely different at the end. And again, between that and Robert Rodriguez talking, I'm like, <laughs> Don't build up these expectations. I'm well, so worried. That's the, that. that's the like, oh, you're going to see it completely different at the end. I'm like, oh, is this an I see dead people thing where like, <laughs> oh, we get this reveal and this twist and now it makes the show better if I watch it all over again. Right. But like, to me, that's lazy storytelling. Like you shouldn't need, you shouldn't, your whole story shouldn't rely on a reveal or a twist or an aha moment yeah Mm -hmm. um you know uh because there's no guarantee that people will hang on for that and the only reason that people are hanging on for that is because it's boba fett um so they can get away with it congratulations to them but like it's (laughs) just it's it could it's not bad storytelling, but oh my God, it could be so much better. I love that thought because if they waited till the end of season one of Mando to reveal Grogu, would people have made it through? And probably right. not, right? I mean, the acting in these shows, let's face it, it's not going to win awards for acting. Um, it's there. The stories are over the top. The telling of the stories are, and that's what Star Wars is. And it's awesome. But if you don't know the character, but that using that reveal early and that hook, you were there. That is an interesting thought. If the hook of Book of Boba Fett doesn't show up until episode seven, that's that is that is then. Yeah, they've put the cards on the table and said, you came for Boba Fett. We gave you Boba Fett. Thank you for sticking around. Well, we gave you Boba Fett, but it's not the Boba Fett you wanted. Right. Yeah. Or expected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm sorry, but like a story that is happening present day like the flashback shouldn't be the most interesting part of the yeah. story you know <laughs> yeah and they have been at least and, in and my opinion you know. i agree too and i think <clears throat> like that makes me frustrated because i'm just like well, why didn't they just tell the story chronologically like that's that's what i don't get unless some of the, the whatever this big twist reveal aha moment is something that happens in the flashback 
I don't know. It's just, like I said earlier, I think there's possibly like a really great, cool story they're telling in here, but oh my God, are they going about it the most convoluted ass backwards way? (laughs) Yeah. Well, and something else that stood out to me is thinking about, you know, I've kind of talked about, you know, for me, Boba Fett is best in cameo. Boba Fett is best in, you know, those OT moments that I got to carry since I was a little kid 40 years ago or the cameo moment in season two of Mando. Like those moments, you know, drove me, propelled me like, cause I was never excited about Boba Fett, but after the episode, the tragedy, and then when we get the sting and the teaser at the end, I was like, holy crap, I'm excited for this series. And I've said many times, jokingly, I never knew I would be excited about a Boba Fett series. But there's another thing, and this is a very dumb kind of nitpicky thing, but bear with me for a second. Mm-hmm. If you listen to a podcast or you listen to a radio show and there's somebody on it and you've been listening to them for years, but you've never seen what they look like, mm-hmm. you just know their voice. So you build this image in your mind of what they look like. And then one day you see what they actually look like. And you're like, I don't Boba Fett because of when I got Boba Fett as a kid was Jeremy Bullock. And it was before Tamara Morrison and before special editions where they went in and changed voices and all these things. There's something about the Tamara Morrison version of Boba Fett that I'm just like, "Hmm." and you said it too, Pete, the acting, like there's a lot of scene chewing there. It's a little, it's a little extra for like, it just, it it has moments to take me out of it, I guess is what I'm saying. Whereas it it just feeds that cameo theory that I keep kind of harping on that. I don't mean to make such a big deal out of, but like, I l- and I like you, you don't like Boba Fett. No. That's it. I'm, all this stuff behind <laughs> right. me clearly says I don't like Boba Fett. We'll cancel um, the weekly show. Fine. We sorry, I'm out. Yeah. I'll just toss it in. But also, but I agree with what you said, Heather. And like the flashbacks have been my favorite part of all the episodes besides episode five. I yeah. do truly love the character development with him and the Tuscans. Like that's powerful. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the trauma, the emotional trauma that he dealt with, with his dad, those moments watching the ship fly away when he's still on Camino, like there's power in that story and having that ability for, again, something else that we've always just been told, you know, Obi-Wan telling Luke in star Wars about the Tuscans mm-hmm. and then Anakin killing them all. And well, they're just mindless killers in the de- Like there's a story there. And I love that the Tuscan chief himself says, not all tribes are the same. Like there's so much. And of course, you know, the commentary about it being indigenous people and the things that we can relate to, that's very powerful. And I'm a hundred percent here for that, but you said it best for a story that's supposed to be told in the present. The best parts of it have been the parts in flashback. Yeah. It's interesting. If it was clone wars animated, I think we would have gotten a four episode arc, 20 minutes each of the flashbacks. And then we would have mm-hmm. gotten a four episode arc of, of the, Current day, Boba Fett, maybe a little Mando, little arc there, and then we would have closed it down. Um, and so it's it's interesting because I don't know where this goes at this point. I think this is the this is the uh, the big challenge, and maybe maybe we're maybe we're ready to talk a little bit about where where we think it goes. I mean, it's interesting because so before we get there, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't want to cut you off. Um, Please, we do have Heather, and Heather is an unapologetic lover oh. of droids. <laughs> Yes, we didn't even talk about in the fact, episode, really. <laughs> when, and and just to throw this out there, when Heather was on Podcast of the Wheels, the top seven list we counted down was her top seven favorite droids. Right. Um, and this was this episode and last week were very droid. I mean, it was a droid buffet of like lots of fun. So a couple of things, and I'll just throw these up here on the screen. Heather, jump in with whatever you want. We have Pelly and her squad. <laughs> we've got a Treadwell. We've got pit droids. We've got R4. If that wasn't enough, and this is where I really want Heather to chime in, we've got this good boy right here. I, oh my God, I, I'm like getting giddy right now. Like, Because I, if we're talking about fan reaction, this is really squealed. what we're talking about. I squealed so much. I love BD1 so much. I have a throw blanket that someone gifted me that's all BD1s. I want my own BD1. <laughs> so much and to see like a live action one like i hope he was actually built like i hope you know it wasn't just a Absolutely. cg thing because i want him <laughs> <laughs> and it was great the way they used bd1 
like he was used in the video game. It's a subtle yes. sort of thing, but yeah. he was he was literally you, like for so those he's of like you, a puppy, like he right. Was, mm-hmm. <laughs> And for those of you that played Jedi Fallen Order, he did the hologram of it, right? He hologrammed what needed to be done and then you did it. And (laughs) that's, it was so great. And he was just, and, and when he was grabbed by the scurrier or the womp rat or whatever, I was like, no, no, you can't just show him and then get rid of him. I know. I know. And and after he got grabbed, he had the little limp like BD1 has in Fallen Mm -hmm. Order. Um, And that brings up something too, talking about, you know, the ways they use that particular droid. Um, Throughout this series, I really have appreciated the way they've used humor in this mm-hmm. series in every single episode. And sometimes it comes in kind of the ways that Boba is not really great at being a crime boss. And like he has to look at Finnick and go, wait, aren't they supposed to pay me? Like some of those moments are really funny. Um, the TSA moment when Den <laughs> has to unload all his stuff into the crate made me laugh out loud. <laughs> of course, I was nervous. Yeah. When he came off the ship, of course, we thought, you know, some the dark saber is going to be gone. Like, there's a reason they're doing this. And like Pete said before he came on the air, he's like, there really wasn't a reason to have to do that other than it was funny that he had yeah. to take, you know, every single piece. Um, the one that hit me and maybe even flashed me back to some childhood trauma was when <laughs> BD1 was being the flashlight and Din kept telling him where to shine it and he couldn't quite get it right. Like, we all had a moment with our dad where he's like, no, shine it right here. What are you doing? <laughs> um but yeah, but the droids, I had to bring that up for Heather's benefit because as a huge droid lover, that was a big part of this episode that I thought was a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, it was so, so good. And like, it's so funny because I literally just, I'm going to Galaxy's Edge for the first time Ooh, uh, nice. in March and I just booked my droid build and Excellent. that's all I care about. So <laughs> well, everybody on Twitter will anxiously be awaiting to see what yeah. it is you build. Oh yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna be so indecisive, but my boyfriend's also getting one too. So I'll make him use his and sacrifice to build it. There you go, one. that's right. That's <laughs> like, when you, when you go to dinner with your, with your, significant other you're like we kind of i want kind of want the chicken but i also kind of want the fish and you want exactly. to i'll tell you what you get the fish i'll get yeah, the chicken get that and one. somebody's not happy but but it's interesting too because we we talked a little bit about this and and since we're, we're digging a little bit into the episode because i think yeah. that whole section i mean there was about 10 minutes of screen time building the n1 starfighter mm-hmm. um so it was funny. My son actually said, my nine-year-old son, a very observant, said, "Where is he going to put his bounties in that?" Yeah. Thing? And that's a great question. And it's it's. I think uh, I think Scotty said it, Nick, when you and I were, were yes. texting with him. Maybe he's moving beyond that. Maybe that's maybe this is sort of that step toward it, or maybe it'll just be because Star Wars, and he'll find a way to get them in there. <laughs> but. Um, it was they spent a lot of time on that ship, so it's not a short term ship. They put the most obvious here's where Grogu's gonna go bubble yeah. behind. The, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the, uh, if you're gonna it's telegraph it, it, telegraph it, right? That was, was it Grogu there. the astromech, like what? <laughs> <laughs> it's either but, that or Din. Din is going to go strictly to beheadings, and they're just gonna fit in that little part. <laughs> right. there. I mean, he said he didn't need to bring it back warm, so that's right. I mean, was, he, he's kind of decided <laughs> did they use the same exact audio cut of pedro pascal with that i can bring you in warm or i can bring you in cold i, I need to compare them oh, i would love it so yeah. close be funny it was so fun but put, so put that in the gallery episode <laughs> so it brings up the question um before we go into predictions is he gonna are we going to well this leads directly into predictions is is he gonna go see grogu now um are we going to see that? How are they going to bring them? Is he going to? Is Din going to come back to this? I have my I have my theory. Nick, I shared it with you, but I'll, <laughs> I want to hear you guys. What do you think is going to happen? Are we going to see this visit to Grogu in Book of Boba Fett time? I think that um, I don't care. I just want whatever the armor made to be a tiny little Mandalorian helmet for Grogu. Ooh. That's See, all I want. I, I, I like know that. that's and not what it is, but like that's that's in my head canon. So that's right. <laughs> well, I, I love all, that yeah, that they tied it up that way. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that they tied it up to look like Grogu's cute little head. I mean, yeah. we can and there's and there's a Japanese 
some folding art, something that has a name that I don't know now that that was supposed to reflect. Um, but I do think they telegraphed a pretty specific chain mail kind of moment mm-hmm. with all those little yeah. rings spilling out. Yeah. Uh, the big debate that I've seen, at least again, I say, I feel like we watched this episode last week. It was two days ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's either, and maybe this is the question for the both of you. Is it a head shroud kind of thing or is it a shirt? Cause I'm in shirt camp. I think it's a shirt. I'm in shirt camp. Yeah. I'm in shirt camp too. I'm in yeah. shirt camp. Okay, but... good. Well, at least we agree on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Nick, do you think we're going yeah. to see that visit with Grogu? Not this season. I, I agree with you. I think he, you know, we get left with him heading that way. And I like, I think what you said maybe to us in the group text and to yep. steal your moment, he's going to head out and we're going to get my man, Carson Teva, those guys patrolling again. And he's oh. either going to get turned back by the new Republic that's patrolling or this is, he's going to get turned back by the Pikes. You know, yeah, something I think, about I think, this yeah. coming conflict is going to turn him back and he wants to go. I saw somebody post today, and this was a little bit dark. Either the Pikes <laughs> take or kill Pelimoto. And so he oh, comes no. back because of we that. Like, Amy we don't need Sedaris. that. We, no. Yeah, we, we need Space Amy Sedaris. We need they that to can't. stay. No, I would get um, so But mad. no, I think this was the bit. This was the one Mandalorian specific part of this series. I think Grogu, the gift, all that stuff will pick up in Mando season three. I think yeah. he heads that way and gets turned back to help Boba and Fennec and honor that thing that he said he would do. Yeah, that's my sense. I, I think Fennec says something like, you know, OK, but be quick. And as soon as he pulls out of the atmosphere, there's a thousand Pike ships ready to invade yeah. and he can't get out. And so he's sort well, of and it, and it would mirror really in a neat way when he dropped Grogu off to um, what's his name Um, originally in the first season, he drops him off and he sits in the ship. He looks at the knob and realizes crap. I can't leave. I have to go back. I have feelings. Yep. It could mirror something like that. He shows up, you know, he's on his way out to go find the kid and realizes these guys are my friends too. I need to come back and help them because it's more pressing. That might be kind of a, yeah, I, that would be a good way to do it too, because he did refuse payment for it. And, Mm -hmm. uh, Interesting. Interesting. I like that you said he said uh, Mando had feelings for Grogu as if like he had fallen in love. With him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, obviously, you know, it's, I think the paternal thing for sure, you know, yeah, I think what, it's that, you know. but yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just out here catching feelings, you know, that's right. You know, out here catching those baby Yoda feelings. It happens. It's, it's true. It's those eyes, man. Look like yeah, Every time. It really is. It is. <laughs> So um, let's let's talk about where we think the show is going to go. All right, we got two episodes left of Book of Boba Fett. I we all seem to agree that that was a a one shot Mando. We're not going to be sort of sneaking our way into season three of Mandalorian. I said the other day that a lot of people are like, there's only two episodes left. What can you do with it? Well, the way I look at it, and then I'll throw it to, to, to you, Heather, is you have, if you have, even if they're two 45 minute episodes, that's 90 minutes, that's a movie length. Mm-hmm. You can tell a good story there, especially with two hours left. So I'm not worried about um, having enough time to do it. I wish that, you know, and I think that that's, again, that binge mindset, right? You expect it to build differently. I don't want it to end like season eight of Game of Thrones, where it was like, <laughs> oh, by the way, now she's bad and she's burning the whole city and she's lost her mind. Um, but where, Heather, where do you think where do you think these last two episodes of Book of Boba Fett are going to take us? I, I mean, where Tatooine? That's where the whole show has been. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Disney Plus. I don't like these questions. Come on, guys. No. Um, <laughs> look, I. There's there's the hopeful me that like, oh, we're suddenly going to get a well-paced, you know, context. All the story is there. Um, I don't know if that's going to be true. I think I worry episode seven is going to be very, very slow, talk heavy. And then like an appearance will show like whatever the aha will be at the end of episode seven. Yep. And then eight will be the war, right? Whatever this war is that they've been talking about for, for six episodes right. now. Um, 
Yeah, like, and then eight is going to be like all out action, resolution, whatever. But but I think most of seven is going to be pretty pretty slow, talk heavy stuff. Um, it's a Filoni episode. The end. Yeah, it's a Filoni episode. So he's a co writer and director on it. So. Yeah. So I, someone's going to show up in it. That's that's that's, that's right. Filoni. Someone's that, that's gonna the show hallmark of Filoni, right. Um, right? Who that is? It could be anyone. There's there's you know pick your fan theory. There it literally could be anyone. They haven't really done a good job of teasing anyone in particular. I don't think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm I I'm not I I'm also someone who like I try to go into things without any expectations, especially mm-hmm. with yeah. Star Wars because how people get pissed off um, right. and let down <laughs> um and hey let's face it even bad star wars is still star wars it's kind of like pizza yes, yeah kind of like pizza so um That's right. what are we really complaining about here yeah <laughs> but uh but yeah i mean i you know i'm here for it we'll see what's gonna happen and we'll see how it will all go down literally in eight awesome mm-hmm. nick what are your just thoughts just don't kill black or sand no they like, yeah. can't no 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 yeah and, and- I don't know. This is completely off track from that, but I feel like, and we said it maybe the first week he showed up. Um, I love the idea that he was introduced so that we could get to see him again in the Obi-Wan series. I would love that. I know there's of course a comic book arc and a whatever. That's all like, I want. I would, That's I would re- all. Even if it's not, I don't need a, you know, direct recreation of those moments. I do. Know there's a history. <laughs> okay. Well, I do. You're the expert. So I'm going to yield to you. Obi-Wan gave Black Christian that scar and he has Correct. that scar. So I want that moment. That's Damn fine. I, I, I now officially want that as well because Heather said so. So that's all that I need. Um, yeah, and I will be disappointed. Forward, <laughs> that is my expectation. Well, when that happens, <laughs> just come back here and talk to us I about will. it. And, and I will. we'll, we'll, you we'll counsel you now. through the whole thing. That's right. <laughs> we'll counsel you through the whole thing. Uh, as far as next week and the next, you know, the next two episodes, we've got two left. Um, as a longtime lover of TV shows and, you know, whether it's The Sopranos, whether it's Game of Thrones, any of those things. There is a little bit of history with the whole penultimate episode thing. It's not always the last one. It's the second to last. Yeah. So I love that there's the, you know, and it's the excitement. I think it even ties to what Heather said. Same thing with expectations. I'm not coming in with like, oh, they better give me this or I'm going to be pissed or Ooh, they better give me, you know, whatever. Said to somebody the other week, I don't know the first thing about Moon Knight and I'm going to remain that way because I'm excited to just watch that series and just consume it as somebody who knows nothing about Moon Knight. Right. Um, so next week, like it would be exciting for it to be, I think the last two are the war. We're right back to Bobo. We're right back to getting his, you know, crew together. Would I be surprised and excited to see Bo or Cobb Vant? or you know space bill burr for god's sakes like yeah let's go let's rally them all up yeah um but i'm just here to i'm just here to enjoy it i'm here to see what we're gonna get and i'm excited more than anything maybe especially in light of this week's dialogue and what everybody's been talking about get the last two episodes and then look at the whole thing as one big piece of storytelling and say what from there what do we want right yeah, I, I, my thoughts are next <laughs> week with, um, <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, she wants Matt. a treat. She wants okay, a treat. Okay, that's right. That's the dog wants. tour wants a treat. That's what's <laughs> most important. <laughs> Sorry, go Just ahead, Pete. That was too good not to put up. No, hey, hey, the Blue Band the Milk guys, they rule. So, um, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so my, yeah, my feeling is next week is the gathering of the army. The, the last of the pieces of the puzzle, I think it's going to be, uh, I think next week is fan service at the wazoo, especially cause I think it's Filoni. I, uh, since it is Filoni, I think, look, there's been too many rumblings of Cad Bane to not have him show up somehow. I think we're going to get Bosk. <laughs> I think we're going to get, um, I, I do think we're going to get space bill Burr. Um, and here's the thing that would be very strange, but it would, this might be that thing that people are talking about, which would be shocking. Um, <laughs> what if we get Cara Dune and I know it's crazy and I know she's not contracted and I don't want to see her, but I think there's that, there's the possibility of, of grief carga of anybody who's been involved in the show kind of being on Boba's team. Now, that being said, in all seriousness, I do think it will be a rogues gallery and it will be fan service and it may just be background, right? We may see 
Afra in the background, right? Or or people who are connected to BK in that series. That would be awesome. Um, and I don't think there's going to be a lot of, I don't think Bosk is going to have a five minute soliloquy, but I think we're going to see <laughs> him in the background. I think we're going to see Cad Bane and, and all these people who, because Boba has now, I think what he's done is he's shown, I'm giving you all a second chance. I'm giving Tuscans a second chance. I'm, I, I'm not, he didn't go after, you know, he had a chance to, to, do something horrible to BK, and instead he gave him a job. So I think that's what we see this week. And then to both your points, I think episode, the, the final episode is just, uh, it's a Robert Rodriguez battle. And it's, now here's my challenge. I've learned that I don't love the Robert Rodriguez style Star Wars. Although I loved, I love the tragedy. I haven't liked his two episodes. Those They've been yeah. my two least favorites. So I'm a little concerned about that, but there, the, he's a bit esoteric in his, in his direction there. there yes. I can, t I can tell that he knows the story that he's telling, right? Like I can tell it is so clear to him, but I am just not in his head watching it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, who knows? Who knows? So we do not, I mean, and I, you know what? And if you think about it, that's kind of, really successful storytelling right that we we're now at this point it, it we would all agree it's been a little bit choppy we know that it's not the story that people brought with them into this series um but we we don't know where it's going to go which is a good thing i mean it would suck if we all decided well yeah obviously next week is this and then the week after is that um so that's good and i i think I think having the Mando episode the way they did was brilliant because it really now has us, you know, however the series ends, we're all pumped for Mando now. So, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. feel I'll, like yeah. it, it, I, I just like they gave us this Mando episode and everyone's really hyped about it because that's the Boba Fett series that they wanted. <laughs> well, I, right. I mean, that, that's exactly. why they create that's why they created you know? Mando, right? They told them you can't do a Boba Fett series because we have plans for Boba Fett. And they're like, all right, so we'll make a Boba Fett light. And he's Boba Fett prime. Turns out it's pretty <laughs> good. Yeah. 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 yeah I want to, I want to address two things in the chat real quick. I do like what Matt and or Sean said. High hopes that the Tuscan <laughs> warrior shows up alive for the finale episode. I think so. Yep. I'm wholly yep. on board for that. It was very clear. We didn't see that body. What if the in... Tuscan warrior is the leader of the Pikes? <gasps> oh, 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 oh it, whoa. That, huge breaking news if we had a do 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 we'd, we'd be there um how do we, how do we not the, have that <laughs> I, come on pete what are you doing yeah, are you next trying week. i'll get on next that. week that's right breaking news um the other one and i will bring this back jeff said it who's going to play cad bane i have uh, a very personal theory about this uh, heather you're up first go ahead no i'm gonna play him oh you're gonna play him. <laughs> oh heather's gonna be cad bane <laughs> well then never mind my theory is crap um, <laughs> I was going to say, even though we have got him as the marshal, I think Timothy Oliphant is the perfect oh person to put on a mask and be Cobb Vanth because mm -hmm. he's tall and skinny. He's got that Southern swagger. He's space justified on like five different levels. I think that would be a fun way to involve him again. Put a little effect on his voice and you can even totally. use his voice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the draw, the whole Beauty thing. Club. So <laughs> that would be great. That would be amazing. Um, but, you know, Heather, you can maybe play them in the Blue Bantha Milk Co. AI sure. version. That's book totally. Book. We're, we're going to make could. Blue Bantha Heather happen. <laughs> yes, I'll do. I'll do a great uh, reveal like my Asajj Ventress. So. Yeah, your Asajj was, <laughs> was amazing. So, <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, as I, I was telling you before, there's only a handful of, of podcasts and shows that I don't miss. And anytime and Blue Bantha Milk can do an AI anything yep. and i'm there so uh, ai phone book let's go <laughs> so well hey guys we we talked about this for a little over an hour and thank you so much heather for joining yeah. us tell people where they can keep up with you and what's going on with you that they should know about yeah so you can follow me and all my crazy comic book adventures at twitter um at heather antos just my name pretty simple um and i post a lot of doc pictures on there too so yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, good. Nick, what's happening on Podcast of the Wheels this Thursday? Uh, coming up this Thursday, actually, it is Matt and Sean from Blue Bantha Milk Co. <gasps> hey! 
talk about synergy. We try to, it's almost like we planned it. We totally didn't, but that's the way it works. Um, Matt and Sean are going to be joining me for chapter four of our Return of the Jedi canon study, digging into some great moments there, talking about what do we see, what are we pulling out of that. Um, so, yeah, that's this week. I'm excited about that. Awesome. Well, Heather, thank you so much for joining yeah. us. This was a blast. Always great to talk. You know, and I'm I'm actually happy that we didn't dig into the episode too much because I think we took a slightly different tack. We did promise a different take. And um, yeah, everybody else has already talked about all the Easter eggs. We <laughs> had right. some fun. You know, that's the thing. You do the show on a Friday. There's been two days worth of 622 podcasts talking about uh, <laughs> Book of Boba Fett. Where do you go from here? So, uh, but thank you so much, Heather. Hopefully, we'll have you on again sometime. And uh, when we get the Book of Black Chrysanthemum, you're going to have to be a regular. And uh, uh, Nick, thank you so much for hanging out and may the force be with Every you. Every time. Always. Well, that wraps it up for this week's streaming Star Wars. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review it. Follow us on all your social media channels at ATGCast. Head over to ATGCast.com to find out how you can become a patron and find some super cool merch, find older episodes, and find out about all the other shows that are part of the ATGCast stream. The show has been copyright 2022P in the studios, and thank you for listening. May the Force be with you. Roger, roger. <laughs>